There are some things that I wish I knew when I first started working with coloured pencil so that I could have avoided making these mistakes and improve my drawings faster. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I create drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. And by the way, this coloured pencil piece that I'm showing you in the background of the chickens is actually available over on my Patreon channel as a full length real time tutorial. So if you're interested in following along, I'll leave that link in the description for you. The first mistake that I wanted to talk about is using the wrong paper or pencils. There are a lot of papers labelled as drawing paper, so it can be quite confusing to choose one that will work for the techniques that you want to use and achieve the end result that you're after. For example, this paper is labelled as drawing paper, but the end result is actually quite grainy with the coloured pencil. And it doesn't matter how much blending with solvent or burnishing I do on this paper to try and smooth out the colours, it just doesn't look great. It almost looks crayon-like. It also doesn't allow me to add many layers of coloured pencil, and this is important because you don't want your drawing to look like a colouring in page where you just place different colours in each section. You really want to be able to layer your colours on top of each other and tint those colours underneath to create that depth and realism. Another thing to think about when you're choosing your paper is your method of blending. These cheaper drawing papers don't allow many layers and you may not be able to press hard to smooth out those pencil strokes or burnish the paper. And you probably won't be able to use solvent to blend because both of these options will most likely damage your paper. So there are two main papers that I like to use and they're really quite different from each other. So the first one is a hot pressed watercolour paper and I either use Arches or Arche or however you pronounce it or the Fabriano Artistico. Either brand will work pretty well. The main reason why I like this paper is because it's quite smooth so the end result doesn't look too grainy. It allows multiple layers of coloured pencil which helps me create more realistic looking textures and you can use solvent on this paper without damaging it. If you choose a smoother paper like this, you'll need to have quite a sharp point on your pencil and make sure that you're doing tiny overlapping sort of oval shaped pencil strokes and use a very light pressure so that it will look nice and smooth in the end. If you're messy with your strokes or you push too hard in the beginning, it can actually show through in the end result. But if you have the patience to spend the time to create those smooth strokes, then this paper is actually really nice to use. And when I use the hot pressed watercolour papers, I find that my drawings have a nice soft finish to them and the colours look a little bit more subtle in comparison to my second paper choice, which is Claire Fontaine Pastel Matte. And this paper doesn't seem like a practical choice for coloured pencil, but it's actually really wonderful once you work out how to use it. When you blend with solvent on this paper, the colours are even more vibrant and painterly than watercolour paper and you can add many more layers in comparison to watercolour paper as well. And you also don't have to be really precise with your pencil strokes, unlike the watercolour paper where you have to have that super sharp point to fill in the grooves of the paper, this paper actually allows you to use a blunt pencil and it will still blend smoothly when you add the solvent. And the best part about this paper is that you can actually work light over dark really easily. So you can add white highlights on top of darker colours if you need to, which can be quite hard to do on a lot of other paper choices. And there are other papers that people like to use, like Velour or Stonehenge, Bristol and many others. So my best advice is to find out what paper your favourite coloured pencil artist is using and try that. The pencils that you use are obviously important as well, and it does depend on your goals as to what pencils you would need. For me, I want to make sure that my supplies are light fast and archival, so that my work doesn't fade or discolour over time. So that means that I won't use a lot of the student quality or cheaper pencils for that reason. But that doesn't mean that some of the cheaper pencils aren't good to use, it just means that my priority is creating archival and light fast artwork. So the main pencils that I find myself reaching for are the Faber-Castell Polychromos, the Caran d'Ache Luminance and the Derwent Drawing. And I like them all for different reasons, but basically the Polychromos have a harder core, so it's great for fine details. The Luminance have a softer wax-based core, which is great for layering more opaque colours. And the Derwent Drawing blend really beautifully with the solvent and they are also more opaque than the other two, but they only come in a set of 24 colours. So the next mistake is not using a form of blending. 
To avoid ending up with a drawing that looks grainy and crayon-like, you can actually use a few different forms of blending to smooth out the results. And there are quite a few techniques that people use to achieve this, so it depends on what you like the look of and also what you enjoy doing. The first technique is layering. So by layering many light layers of colored pencil down, eventually you'll end up with enough pigment on your paper that it blends together in your final layers to create a smooth result. And I don't particularly like this method because it takes too long, but if you're someone who likes to spend a lot of time on a piece of artwork because it's relaxing and you have the patience for it, and then you could try this method. The second method is burnishing, and that's where you build up a few layers, and when you get to your final layer, you push harder with your pencil to really blend and soften the colors into each other. I don't particularly like this method either because I find that it can leave shiny areas on your paper and it can be hard on your hands and wrists if you're pressing hard too often. Sometimes I will push a little bit harder in certain areas if I need that kind of effect on different parts of my piece, but I don't usually do it as my main method of blending. Blending with solvent or odorless mineral spirits or OMS for short is my preferred method because it speeds up the process you don't need as many layers of pencil to fill up the little white grain of the paper and it can actually give a really nice painterly feel. It also allows you to be able to add lighter colors on top of darker colors a lot easier because you haven't damaged the paper from adding too many layers or by pressing hard in the previous layers. The main tip I have for you if you're blending with solvent or OMS is to make sure that you have enough layers down first before you go in with the solvent. If you only have one or two layers down, it's not going to blend very well, so make sure that you have multiple layers down before you go in with the solvent. So these three are the main methods people use for blending, but there are other options which I won't go into in this tutorial because it will be like an hour long. The next mistake is having your initial outline too dark. If you do your outline in graphite, make sure that you lighten it with a kneaded eraser to lift up some of that graphite. And this is because your outline can kind of blend in with the following layers and make a muddy mess, especially if you're using solvent to blend. It can also show through in your end result if your subject isn't dark enough to cover the lines. So I just use a kneaded eraser instead of a standard eraser because you can press and lift the outline, which removes a little bit of the graphite without erasing it fully. Whereas if you use a standard eraser, you pretty much remove the entire outline and it could also damage your paper if you're rubbing it. The next mistake is treating your work like a coloring in page. So you have the outline down and now all you have to do is add color, right? Well, not exactly. If you just color in each section with a block color like it's a coloring page, it's not going to look as realistic or have as much depth as if you work in light layers and build up those colors. When you work in layers, you're subtly altering the colors with every layer that you do and it will help create that depth and realism like you see in oil paintings. For example, if you're drawing fur, you would want to create layers of fur just like you see in real life to help create that texture and depth. If you tried to go in with one or two colors and then just call it finished, it's not going to look as realistic. So you need to make sure that you're pressing lightly with your pencils and working in light layers. Try not to push too hard because that can damage the paper and it will stop you from being able to add more layers on top as well. When you push hard, it's called burnishing, which I talked about earlier, and it is a good technique to use in some cases, but try and save it for the end of your piece where you know you don't need to add any more layers on top. And it's pretty much just a layering process like if you're working with oil paints or acrylic or watercolor. Which brings me to my next mistake, which is not spending enough time. You really can't rush a colored pencil drawing because it can look messy and unfinished. Colored pencil is definitely one of those mediums that you need to take your time in comparison to other mediums. So don't call your work finished too soon. The picture on the left is after a few layers of colored pencil blended with solvent, and then the picture on the right is the completed drawing, and you can clearly see what happens when you keep going and keep layering. The first image does have color over the entire subject, but just because you've colored the whole thing doesn't mean that it's done. Make sure that you have your shading and highlights correct and you've included all the detail that you need to get a realistic result. Using all of these tips and techniques on your artwork may seem a little confusing, but this tutorial in the top left of the screen shows you how I created this red panda in colored pencil step by step. So click on that and I'll see you over there.